jumping into this part, I wanted to first start off with an explanation and then we will get to the actual application of my setting powder today. What is the difference between a finishing powder and a setting powder? I've done a bunch of research, I've watched several videos, and there is a lot of confusion on this topic. So I'm going to explain it in a way that I understand it and after looking at ingredients and comparing several products in my collection, this is the conclusion I've come to. So a setting powder's main job is to help lock in your foundation through the day. It's going to help you remain kind of oil-free longer throughout the day. It's also going to help your foundation not move and make it kind of transfer resistance so when you touch your face, you're not getting foundation on your fingers. Setting powders can come in a wide range of colors and also translucent form. Personally, I prefer a translucent form. I feel like most translucent powders nowadays will work on any skin tone from fair to deep. And why I prefer that is because if you've ever tried to pick out a foundation shade and your concealer shade, and now you get to setting powder and you gotta pick a shade for your setting powder, oh my goodness, it can be a little overwhelming. And if you choose the wrong shade, too light, too dark, you can really struggle with getting your finished look to be the appropriate tone. So generally, I would recommend choosing that translucent shade of setting powder. Now, what sets a setting powder aside from a finishing powder? In general, you want to look at the ingredients because I have a couple of finishing powders here and one of them is actually a finishing powder and one of them actually works for both, but more on a setting level. So this is the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder, and this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Micro Finishing Powder. So if you watched my concealer video, you know this was my powder of choice to use under the eyes. So what makes this finishing powder different from this finishing powder and different from a setting powder? It comes down to ingredients. Setting powders in general are going to have a more dense ingredient as their first or second ingredient. So they're gonna have either talc or cornstarch in the first one or two ingredients. So this one has silica, but the second ingredient is talc. This one has silica and then it has this ingredient, which I'll put across the screen because I am not even going to try to pronounce it. And it's a much lighter weight powder. Now I can feel the silica in this NYX powder, but it just has a slight bit more heaviness. And when I say heaviness, I mean, it's a minuscule amount, but it has just that smidge more heaviness than the Makeup Forever one. So the whole concept of a finishing powder is meant to be the finishing touch to your whole makeup routine. Now, one other finishing powder that I feel like most people use in that way and don't really think of it are the Hourglass finishing powders. So I just have one of their palettes here and it has one of their finishing powders. So Hourglass has all of these finishing powders that are called like dim light or diffused light. I don't even know which one is in here, but they all, their powders tend to have maybe a hint of a little bit of a soft glow, but their finishing powders are meant to go on at the end of your makeup routine. You can use a very fluffy brush. I actually think that the BK Beauty 102 brush is a perfect brush if you're going to use a finishing powder all over your skin. And this one, it's super floppy, and so a finishing powder is not something you're going to pack on your skin. It's something you're going to lightly buff over your skin when you're done. Now, a finishing powder like the ones from Hourglass or even this Makeup Forever one, one of the main jobs is they provide kind of a final blurring effect to the skin. And this one from Makeup Forever absolutely does it. But why wouldn't I want to apply this to set my foundation? It's because this has such a slippery texture to it that if you apply this and then try to put powder bronzer or powder blush on top of it, 
you'll notice that it doesn't adhere to the skin. And that is because this provides that dimethicone, that slippery kind of feel to the skin that helps prevent even kind of water and moisture from seeping down through your powder to your foundation. But it also is going to prevent you from being able to blend in any powder products on top of it. Now, I feel like the Hourglass finishing powders are a little more forgiving in that way, but I personally don't use the Hourglass finishing powders all over my face in that way. I have used the Makeup Forever finishing powder all over my face when I want that extra bit of blurring, and oh my word, it's amazing. Now, when it comes to blotting your face throughout the day, so if you're oily, this is probably a common practice. If you're dry, you're like, what? People have to powder throughout the day? <laughs> So if you need to bring along a powder, obviously a pressed powder is going to be easier to throw in your purse and usually it has a place where you can actually keep a powder puff as well. So a pressed powder is going to usually be the best thing if you need to blot your face throughout the day. But one thing to keep in mind is Again, go back to a translucent setting powder or a translucent blotting powder because if you choose a powder that actually has color to it, if you set your foundation with a, an actual powder foundation, which I know some people do that because they like the extra coverage from a powder foundation. So this is the L'Oreal Freshwear. I know I've seen some people use the Maybelline powder foundation to set their foundation. That's okay. Uh, from the get-go, from at the beginning of the day, it is going to add more coverage, but keep in mind, more coverage is actually going to look heavier and thicker through the day. And then if you get oily and you pull out a powder that has coverage and you pat that on, guess what? You're gonna have patches of extra coverage in certain areas and it is a thicker, denser formula. So your, your foundation through the day is going to look heavier and heavier. So rule of thumb to be on the safe side, I would highly recommend keeping on hand your translucent setting powder. And then I do really feel like the difference is worth investing in for the Makeup Forever finishing powder. All right, let's move into the demo of my application of powder today. So first off, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to set half of my face and I just want to show you the miracle of a good setting powder. So as you're looking at my skin, you can see I still have quite a bit of glow, even though I have on the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. So with that glow, because I have enlarged pores and I have a little bit of texture and some fine lines, you're going to see what a good setting powder can do to help blur those imperfections. So first step though before powder is I just like to go over either with my makeup brush or if you used a damp beauty sponge. Mine is almost dry at this point but I'm just going to go over and I'm only going to powder this half of my face and for powder because I am more of a combination oily girl, I'm going to apply powder with a powder puff and you're going to see me actually apply quite a lot. If you're somebody who has kind of more normal skin and you just want to apply a little bit of powder like in your T-zone or just to blur, you're going to want to use a fluffier brush like this is the 103 from BK Beauty or you can even use a smaller setting brush. This is from Real Techniques. This is perfect for just adding a little bit of powder in those areas. Now I'm gonna show you initially with this powder puff, this is just from Amazon, and I'm using the Honest Beauty Invisible Blurring Powder. This is one of my all-time favorites with this Dior foundation in particular. Now, my preferred method is to add a little bit into the lid of the powder, and I'm just pressing my powder puff in there and then just tapping off. You'll see there is quite a lot of product. I'm going to start in the areas where I have enlarged pores, press there, I'm going to press, I'm not rubbing and I'm not buffing, I'm just pressing and then I'm going to tap what's left out to the rest of the face. And because I don't get particularly oily out here, I also don't have much texture out here, 
I don't need as much powder out here as I do on this area where my pores are larger. And then I'm going to just take a little more powder and tap on the side of the node. And don't forget, kind of under this area as well, powder can help prevent transfer of your foundation to people or clothes. All right, so can you see a difference from this side to this side? Obviously, it's not shiny, but because it's not shiny, it is giving a much bl more blurred effect. All of my pores look like they've disappeared, and that is the miracle of a good setting powder. So on this side of the face, let's do a couple of different application techniques. So I'm gonna use the Real Techniques setting brush with that same powder, and I'm going to just lightly put a little bit of this around the nose, the forehead. So if you're somebody who doesn't want heavy powder and you just want to powder the center of the face, this is what I would recommend doing. Again, you're putting it in the cap, tap off the excess, and then go over not only the areas, maybe where you added a little bit of extra concealer, so we did under the nose here, but also I find it's helpful to kind of go over those areas where you might have some fine lines and just lightly set a little bit of powder. You do wanna make sure, just like under the eyes, that you do not have any creases that you are setting in. So on the forehead, before I powder, I always make sure that I don't have any creasing of my foundation first because once you set it with powder, it's locked in. All right, so that would be kind of the difference. This leaves my whole cheek area unset but I did just set kind of this area. Another option, if you don't want quite as much powder as we did on this side, but you wanna use a powder puff, Laura Mercier, I, apparently this technique has been around for ages. She recommends that you take her powder puff, I've done this with the ColourPop one as well, and you put your loose powder in the lid, and then you're gonna tap or press your powder puff in, and then with that powder on there, you're going to kind of take the powder puff and you're gonna work that powder into the puff itself, kind of work it around so that there's no big clumps of powder just sitting on the surface. And then you can take the powder puff and just press into the areas that you wanna set. So it's a similar concept over here, but you're not gonna get quite as blurring of an effect and quite as much oil control as you do over here. So a little less powder, but it's going to be a more controlled application. And again, I'll add a little bit more just so you can see. But it prevents you from getting too much powder if that is your goal. So again, I could kind of just powder here, leave the tops of the cheeks unpowdered. So you have a little more leeway and you're using less powder on the face. And now I'm gonna just take my powder puff and add just a little more just to even things out. And something I did not talk about as I was powdering this side, but if you have oily skin and you're really trying to get the best bang for your buck when you're using that setting powder, you want to press it into your skin. It is going to make such a big difference in how well your makeup lasts through the day. So if you have been setting your oily skin with a brush and you're finding that the powder is not holding your oils at bay, try using a powder puff and pressing that into those areas. And I know for me, 
I get much better, much longer shine-free wear when I do it that way. Now, after powdering, that is for me the finishing step to my makeup. But I know if you've been around YouTube any amount of time, you will know that most people finish with a setting spray, a makeup setting spray. So I just wanna to touch on this briefly because I'm sure a lot of you have questions. Do they work? Do I need one? Do I not? Here's my opinion, here's my experience. And I have combination to oily skin. I do use really good foundations that are long wearing. So for the most part, I actually do not feel that a setting spray is necessary. If I've done the proper steps to prep my skin, I have the proper type of foundation for my skin type. I've set it with powder. Generally, I don't feel like a setting spray is necessary. Now, many people use a setting spray because they don't like that powdered matte finish to their skin. So if you are a dry skin type, you've probably not even powdered to begin with, but you like that extra finishing mist on your, on your skin. I totally understand that. One of my favorites is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. The mist on this is the finest mist you will ever find out on the market right now. It's truly, I don't even know. Yeah, you could kind of see it there. It is the finest mist. It is wonderful. You're not gonna get those huge droplets of water. And this one actually does a really nice job of not making your face look too wet, but it does kind of set down the powder just a little bit. So if you're somebody looking for kind of a finishing mist to kind of take away the powdered look, this is a good one. Also, I feel like the good old fashioned Matte Cosmetics Fix Plus, the original one, that's the one I have the most <laughs> experience with. This is another great one. This will take down kind of that powdered look. This does have vegetable glycerin in it, so it does have extra hydration. So those are two that I would recommend if you're somebody with drier skin and you just kind of want that finishing mist. If you're looking at a setting spray to add longevity to your makeup, there is only one in my book that actually really makes a difference. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. I know some of you are rolling your eyes, you're like, oh, it's so expensive. It is. And that's why I don't use it every day. I only use it when I really need my makeup to last. But what I love about this setting spray, because I'm a combo oily girl, it does not change the finish of my foundation. So unlike all these other setting sprays that add kind of a dewy finish that I then feel like I need to go back and powder, <laughs> this does not make your skin look dewy, but conversely, it will not make your skin look matte. So if you're a dry skin person and you have a nice dewy finish, this is not gonna make it look matte. And then if you have a matte finish, it's not going to make it look wet and oily. I tried this with a foundation that I almost took back because it was the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better foundation. That one just started breaking down on me after about four hours. And then when I used this setting spray, I could get a full day's wear out of it. So that to me was the big difference. I've used the Urban Decay All Nighter. That doesn't do any anything for me. So if you want to truly make your makeup last longer, go in with a setting spray. So in summary, if you're struggling to make your foundation last all day or you've got extreme weather like we do in the summer here, you may want to have a setting spray on hand or if you have super dry skin and throughout the day you just need that refreshing mist, you can definitely keep a setting spray on hand, but don't think that you must have a setting spray to make your makeup look amazing throughout the day. So as with all of the other videos in the description box below, I will have links to all of the products that I used and demoed, as well as my other recommendations in that product category. I do have an updated version of my top favorite foundations, top favorite concealers, powders, etc. Those videos are coming, so stay tuned for that. I hope that you have found this Makeup Building Blocks series interesting and helpful. Stay tuned because in the next grouping, we will be going over eyebrows, eyeshadow, mascara, and lip application. So I hope that you will tune in for those videos. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.